Well, thank you, and thank you to the organizers, the city, to Nicoletta Bogdan, and the team for the opportunity to be here. As others have said, this is a, a beautiful city, and uh, it's a, an honor to be here. Um, thank you to the translators, the interpreters, whose job I see getting increasingly difficult as the clock ticks down and the speakers speak faster and faster to get through their material. I will try and keep at a, an even level. Um, so I grew up in England uh, and moved to the US in 1988. And um, I was briefly the Secretary General of the European Cyclists Federation when that was an all-volunteer organization, no staff, uh, so uh, a long way from where the organization is today. Um, and I confess I come with no European programs, blueprints, formulas, covenants, uh, or, or funding programs, or anything like that. Um, so you will, you'll see uh, my message is, is a little simpler, perhaps. Um, I've been doing this long enough to know that um, the reasons why active transportation, why bicycling is a good thing, uh, the list is endless. It relates to uh, every element of policy that mayors and cities have to address. And so there is always a good reason to be promoting active transportation. And I would imagine that every city of every mayor that's represented here today has these policies as their goal, high quality of life, climate uh, protection. Uh, equality, equity, uh, and active transportation is at the core of all of those things. So if you are going to be a green city or an energy city or a healthy city or a safe city, active transportation needs to be at the core of your policies and programs. The U.S. is not a good example to follow. Uh, we, um, we are a terrible uh, country when it comes to sustainability and our cities are far from sustainable. So. The lessons that I share with you today are from the mistakes that we have made and not from the good examples that we have to share. Uh, this was considered for a long time to be an aspirational uh, approach to transport policy of mixing cyclists and traffic together uh, and no one wants to do it. So um, do not learn from the way we have done things, learn from our mistakes. And I know that we share the same inspirations. Uh, and the best practices and the knowledge transfer needs to come from the places where you can see large numbers of people cycling and walking and taking public transport. That is Denmark, that is the Netherlands, and we should not be shy about uh, taking their examples and applying them to the Romanian context, to other contexts. Um, there is a reason why people choose to walk and cycle and take public transport in cities in the Netherlands and Denmark and other parts of Europe in large numbers is because it is the quickest, the cheapest, the safest, the most accessible, the most aspirational, the most practical means of getting around. And until that is true in Romanian cities, it will be a challenge to see the, the level of cycling and walking increase. So uh, what lessons do I have to share? I, I think you will see there are themes uh, emerging throughout the last three days that will be reflected in these lessons. Number one, um, the city scale is obviously the best level of government to address active transportation issues. In the US, uh, our states or provinces, I guess the development uh, regions that, that Romania has, are too big. They are our biggest challenge. Our national government, uh, is very fickle, it changes uh, direction wildly. So at the moment we have a very good transport minister. He used to be the mayor of a city, he understands transport issues. Uh, the previous administration, not so good. Um, it changes wildly. So cities are the best place, the best level of government to address active transportation. And setting those targets that Ivo and others have talked about is a really critical um, responsibility and, and, and driver of policy and change. Uh, you can see the US cities are terrible. Uh, our level of car use for journeys to work is, uh, is above 90% in uh, a lot of US cities. So that is not uh, aspirational. Many of our cities have as a, as a goal to get to 50%. Uh, which they consider wild and, and, uh, and unimaginable. But you can see for um, Utrecht, you are at 18%. Uh, 
Uh, Bucharest, I saw, I, the research I did said it was at 36%. I find that a little hard to believe. Um, and, and if it is true, it speaks to the uh, oversized impact of traffic on quality of life um, because it feels like much higher than that. But um, establishing a target and holding yourself accountable to reach that target is a critical uh, thing for mayors and for cities to do. Uh, and, and, and you do that in the context of a vision that you should um, hold every project accountable towards. So if you say you are, you have, as, as Brussels has, a, a mobility plan that is about green infrastructure, about social connections, uh, about creating a pleasant quality of life and healthy communities, every project you invest in needs to reflect those goals and, and Brussels is now doing that. And since 2020, uh, there is a transformation underway, uh, I understand, that, that, that uh, is, is changing the face of, of, uh, of the city of Brussels, uh, this, particularly the center. And even though there is opposition at first, people now are coming to realize this is a, a, good, uh, a good answer. So um, have the courage to act on your vision and hold yourself accountable to the goals that you have, and don't do things that will not meet those uh, goals and that vision and that, that, uh, that those targets. It seems simple to say, but countless US cities have a terrific plan with all the right language, and then you look at the things that they spend money on, and it's a completely different list of things. So um, don't follow the path of the US as your cities uh, change and grow and, and, and um, the opportunity to remake our cities is in front of us, uh, as the funding is there to, to, to make changes. Uh, do not believe that um, cars animate the public space, that you need cars to create life and activity in cities. Do not believe that widening roads eases congestion and makes life better. Do not believe that cars are an equitable solution in the transportation sector. Um, it simply isn't true, and we are learning uh, at our cost that that, that, that is a, a, a challenge. Uh, do not go down that path. As you and in Romania invest in infrastructure, um, it does not have to look like this. There are a, a lot more humane and people-centered ways to, uh, to do this work. And fortunately, improving conditions for walking and biking are are not rocket science. My business, I work for a, a consulting firm that wants you to think that it is complicated and you need our expertise to, uh, to create the right conditions for bicycling and walking, but in fact, it's very simple. This is a place uh, where you can, I think, imagine yourself walking and cycling with your children, with your older grandparents or whomever, uh, because it's a, a safe, comfortable, attractive place to ride a bike. Uh, it is not that hard to, to, to do that, and it turns out it is quite easy to get that wrong. Um, something else we've learned, and certainly have learned from European cities, is that you want to make uh, big changes quickly. In, in the US, we would say um, you want to rip the Band-Aid off uh, in one go, rip the plaster off in, in one go, uh, get all the pain over with first and quickly. We've seen that going back 30, 40 years to cities like Delft and Groningen in the Netherlands, uh, to Seville and Pontevedra in Spain, um, uh, these days talking about Brussels and Paris, where uh, major changes in infrastructure have created a major change in behavior, and it's really important to make those big changes quickly to have the greatest impact, and because we have no time to waste. Uh, in the cycling world, that means building connected networks, not just individual bits of infrastructure here and a cycle path there and a cycle path through the park that doesn't connect to anything. It's connecting. It's connecting on main, on main roads, through the intersections and junctions, across major barriers so that people can actually get to the places they need to go. It seems really simple and it seems uh, awkward to say it, but I think it still needs to be said in, in, uh, in many cities. And the network needs to be accessible for people of all ages and abilities. Um, again, we are creating a, a community for everyone where everyone needs to feel uh, involved uh, and, and able to use the, the system. Uh, and 
it will be difficult, as others have said, even though we know what to do and we know the money is there and the, the technical knowledge is there, uh, it, it's still hard to make these transitions. So connecting active transportation and, and cycling and walking to the bigger issues of safety and health and climate is, is a really important thing to do and helping people understand their contribution, uh, the things that they're doing, why it will, will benefit them and why their um, uh, behavior will, will benefit the city is a critical role for mayors and cities to play. Um, last of my 10 items is um, please have the courage to act. Believe in your, uh, there's, you, you will notice there's no uh, science or data, no research formula, no um, quantum physics uh, to, to, to consider here. This is politics. This is having the courage to make big decisions, to change the way your community looks and feels. And we know cities across uh, Europe have done that. Um, there is no time to waste. We have to act on uh, uh, in creating active transportation networks in cities. So even though um, that, that's all been uh, kind of a campaign speech, um, I do have five very practical tools that, again, seem really simple, but in, in the U.S., uh, and I think in, in Romania, uh, some of these things can make um, a big difference very easily. Uh, so um, uh, this is the, the simple part. Um, bollards that go up and down are, are, are magical. I mean, uh, 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 all the technology and technological solutions that we've seen uh, to, to, to solve connectivity and, and, and uh, 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 all the other issues on the table. Um, it seems to me that just managing the flow of traffic and uh, creating more livable, walkable, bikeable places, more human-centered places by um, using the technology of bollards that go up and down uh, to protect areas seems like a, a very worthwhile thing to do more of. Um, a very similar, very simple, very straightforward thing to do, which again seems odd to even say, but um, I think it's very noticeable when you go to countries where there's lots of cycling and walking, where car traffic is, is minimal and, and, and low speed. It's because of infrastructure like this that, uh, that, that encourages slow speeds and, and prioritizes cycling and walking in a very real sense. Um, protective, no, I don't mean those protected devices. I mean the protection from, uh, from cars that is, that is real. Um, that, that, uh, that, that creates that space where people want to walk and bicycle. Um, I couldn't resist taking this picture in um, uh, Bucharest earlier this week uh, where there's a, a, a poster, an advertisement um, that is being, uh, uh, is there a pointer on the, oh no, there isn't. Um, but um, the, the bike lane uh, in this picture clearly needs the, uh, the, the Zikla uh, barriers to prevent cars from, from driving in it. Um, uh, like I say, this is not difficult to do. Uh, E-bikes, definitely the future. We've uh, talked a lot about e-bikes and e electric vehicles, but um, uh, they, they seem um, uh, less prevalent in Romania than other parts of Europe. Um, we should anticipate their continued growth, and they are a game changer in terms of um, uh, equity and access and uh, the, afford the, the uh, practicality of cycling. Uh, last thing is, is anything you can do to reclaim space for people and to uh, challenge the dominance of the motor vehicle I think is a benefit to becoming a green city and there are uh, many many different ways of doing that through permanent through temporary through pilot installations a lot of different ways to do that so in summary uh, what do I have to say whoop here we go um, so you, you cannot call yourself a green city uh, without uh, active transportation and a high level of active transportation at the core of your transport and mobility sector. Uh, we know what to do to achieve that. Uh, we know that we have no time to waste and we must act fast. Um, we cannot afford to act gradually any longer. Uh, the time uh, just isn't there to do it. And the U.S. is not, there is no city in the U.S. that would be a good example for you to follow on this path. Um, I'll give a quick plug for the technical information that is available for those of you who want to do more in this area. The Velo City Conference, which was, of course, in Ljubljana uh, last year, uh, is an excellent forum for that. And there is an international trails conference 
uh, for uh, long distance, particularly for long distance trails, the kind of Eurovelo type uh, project uh, in Ottawa and Canada uh, next year as well, where there's an opportunity to learn more about these topics. So with that, um, I will thank you and pass the microphone.